Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I've got some exciting news to share today, but first, let me introduce you to my new office. This is the reason my channel went dark over the holiday season, as I poured every spare minute I had into finishing off this room to make filming videos this year a bit easier and to give me somewhere a bit more comfortable to work in the unbearable heat we've had here for the last few weeks. Enough about me though, I know what you guys are here for. I didn't want to announce this project before the Nuck Deck is complete. But since the Chinese New Year is upon us, there will be a slight delay in getting the next version of the power management PCBs completed, so I thought I'd make a start on the next project in the meantime. The Nuck Deck will still be completed before I've made any major progress on this one though, so for the few of you who are planning to build it, no need to panic. I've spent the last couple of months deciding what I want to do next and listening to your feedback on the Nuck Deck project, and you've all made one thing abundantly clear you would have used an AMD Mini PC instead. So I started looking for an AMD system I could possibly use as an upgrade, which led me to the likes of B-Link, Mini's Forum, GMK Tech, etc. They are all very poorly documented in comparison to the NUC, which is one of the reasons I picked it in the first place. But with a massive amount of help from PCBWay, I decided to jump in blindly and order something I thought might work. The B-Link SER5. This one is powered by a Ryzen 7 5700U and came with 16GB of RAM, which should make it at least close to comparable to most modern handheld gaming PCs. After a short test boot to ensure everything was working, I ripped it apart and started measuring up the PCB. As it turns out, the PCB is slightly larger than a NUC, at roughly 120mm wide and 110mm in height. The overall thickness of the PCB and cooling assembly is about the same as a NUC though, so that's a good start at least. The extra width, however, means that it just won't fit in the NUC deck case without major changes. So I'm going to start again from scratch and I'm taking you guys with me right from the beginning this time. I have a list of my own complaints about the original NUC deck as well that I want to address, starting with the controls. As a few of you have noticed, the joystick and D-pad positions aren't ideal. The bodies of the full-size joysticks are quite large, so I couldn't move them far enough in to get the right joystick in the natural position. I received an email a few months ago asking if I could make a version of the NUC deck with a PlayStation-style layout, which got me thinking about the joystick depth issue. If I move to a symmetrical layout like a PlayStation or the Wii U, I will have the full depth of the hand grips for the joystick bodies, allowing me to finally use a full-sized Hall Effect joystick. My second complaint from the original design is the display. I've been pretty unhappy with the quality of the screen overall since the beginning of the project. The IPS panel I ended up settling on is okay, but the greying out of the sides when it first starts up bothers me, and the gap between the display and the front glass seems to make reflections pretty bad. Not to mention that ideally the resolution could be a bit higher. I also never managed to get touch working, which would make Windows easier to work with. The joystick to mouse control works quite well for navigating Windows, but text input is still quite painful, so ideally I'd like a working touchscreen. Since this mini PC is a tad bigger than a NUC, I decided I'd be happy with a slightly larger screen if that's what it took to find the perfect solution, so I settled on this Waveshare 8 inch display. It's got a nice, thin, even bezel with a 1200 by 800 laminated IPS display and multi-point capacitive touch. The display driver is included and it even handles brightness control via software, which was another one of my biggest complaints from the original version. The power management is the first thing on my list to look at this time, so let's start off with a quick test with the watt meter to see how much current we're going to need to provide to keep this thing running. First, I fired up the Heaven benchmark, but I was unable to get it to fully load the system. I guess it doesn't require enough processing power to put much of a load on the CPU, so I moved on to testing games instead. Doom ended up being the first game I tested that was able to put a significant load on the system. Running at the native display resolution of 1280 x 800, with all settings maxed and VSync disabled, I was still able to get about 70 FPS out of it. Don't judge me too hard on the gaming footage on this one. I didn't bother setting up a controller since I just needed to test the maximum current draw. The highest peaks I've seen during use were about 2.6 amps, which is a fair bit under the maximum rating of the included power supply. The display is also being powered by the PC, so it is included in this measurement. 
I've asked on the B-Link forums about the expected input voltage range since there is no mention of it in the, any documentation and the best I've been able to get out of them is 19 volts plus or minus a volt and that anything outside of that range is risking damage. So I will have to use a modified version of my NUC deck power management but with an added boost stage for a steady 19 volt output. One of the other hurdles I will need to overcome is how to power the PC on and off. There is no front panel header like there is on a NUC, so we've either got to remove the power button and solder wires to the pads, or I can configure the PC to boot when powered and switch the actual power on and off via the battery management. I think that might be the better option and will solve another one of my problems with the original NUC deck by minimizing the power draw when in a shutdown state. This creates a new problem though, as I won't be able to use the same method to shut the PC back down safely when the battery gets low. I do have a solution for that though. Mr. Bro Man Dude Amigo commented on episode seven to let me know that there's a USB HID class for UPSs. So I went searching and I found an Arduino library that can imitate a UPS and provide battery information to the operating system. Not only will this allow me to trigger a shutdown when the battery gets low, I'll also be able to configure the system to clock down as the battery gets lower. I've already tested the example code on an Arduino Micro and it looks like it works nicely. I'll throw a link to the GitHub project in the description so you can check it out for yourselves. I'll still be finalizing the details of this next project in the background for a little while as I get the last parts sorted out for the original NUC deck, but I'll be diving right into this shortly after it's completed. I've pretty much used up all of my creativity with naming things at this point, so please throw me some suggestions in the comments and save me from calling it a B-Deck. Once again, we all owe a massive thanks to PCBWay for their support on this project. This wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for their support of the channel and the open source community in general. So make sure you check them out next time you need any 3D printing, machining, or if you're having any PCBs produced. I should have another update for the NUC deck in a couple of weeks time, so until then, see you next time.